Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here, we're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's going on, man? I'm Lambo Lawson. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Hell yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're from, what you do. Give us that like Tinder profile of your involvement with music. <laughs> Tinder profile. Um, so my name is Lambo Lawson. I'm a rapper. Uh, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Uh, however, I've been in Portland for about four years now. So I'm based in Portland. And um, I don't know what kind of style, like we was talking about earlier. I don't know what style of rapper I am, but I like to do just a little bit about everything for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, what got you into music initially? What was your starting point? Oh, man. Um, I was a band geek. I was a nerd. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> what, what was your that. instrument? So I tried to play saxophone originally, and uh, my school didn't offer a saxophone, so I had to play uh, a baritone horn, which is like a mini tuba. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandfather was signed to Motown. Um, he was the soprano singer of the Four Sportsmen, which is a really old band. Nobody's going to know that. Okay. Hell yeah. And... Um, yeah, so music was all around me, so I just always kind of knew I wanted to do it. I seen the way it made my family feel, so, you know? Yeah. That's kind of why I jumped into it. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's, is it like something where like you were involved in like the making of it growing up as like, like a little, little kid, or did it like, mm -hmm. did you just hear it a lot first and then later decide to get into making it? Definitely heard it a lot first. Uh, one of my first favorite artists, you know, was Michael Jackson, so. Uh, I started off actually trying to dance like him first. Okay. And then from there, I, um, from there, I, I never really thought of recording. I started writing because I was a good writer. I started writing like poetry and stuff. And I didn't even realize I was rapping until I was like 12. Okay. And then that's when I recorded my first song. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, this next question is one we ask early and it's one we ask often and it's definitely a crowd favorite. Yeah. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Um... The first album I ever bought for myself with my own money was 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Hell yeah. Uh, and then before that, I bought my first album with my own money for my sister. So it was oh, really okay. Me, but I bought her TLC fan mail. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That that might be the coolest addition to that question I've ever gotten. <laughs> hell yeah. Love that. Yeah, yeah. That was the first CD I bought. It wasn't for me. Nice. It was for my sister. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then what was the first show that you ever went to? That was like one you wanted to go to. Although I imagine you were probably brought to some pretty cool ones as well. Uh, yeah. My, the first show that I ever went to on my own, uh, I would say, uh, hmm. I would say the Roots Picnic back when like Wiz Khalifa was the headliner. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how far long ago that was, but Wiz Khalifa was there. Yellow Wolf was there. Um. I don't remember what year that was, but I definitely know it was the Roots Picnic. Oh, yeah. And then I went to see Mac and Wiz on that half big tour or whatever it was called. And, uh, yeah, Wiz. Nice. Nice. Hell, yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, to kind of finish up getting the getting the foundation out of the way, do you have, like, a defining moment? Like, where you were, like, you, you saw that music kind of switched over from just being, like, a thing you did to the thing you wanted to do? Um... Defining moment, I would say, man, when I was good enough to inspire everyone around me to do what I wanted to do, I decided this is what I need to be doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. a lot of my friends in the neighborhood started rapping and making their own records, and I was able to influence people to be pretty good at it. So whenever you're you're on that level, you know you're supposed to stick with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know, you got the best basketball players in the world that inspire some kids to be basketball players. They know that they're in the right field, you know? Yeah. No, I love yeah, that. That's, that's a great my answer. My moment was very early. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now let's go ahead and get to know you as the artist. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get the easy one out of the way here. How did you pick your name? Uh, my uncle gave me my name because I grew from like 5'10 to like 6'3 overnight, he feels. Oh, damn. Uh, so he started calling me Lambo Lawson because I grew fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, I also heard, you know, 
I, don't, I heard it on some show back in the day. Oh, MTV Cribs. That's when uh, Bow Wow was on MTV Cribs and he called uh, okay. himself Lamborghini Moss. Okay, gotcha. And then I remember when my uncle called me that and then it really stuck because I was like, oh yeah, he was on to something, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. All right, now take us through your writing process. And specifically, I want to focus on when you get inspired. We'll get past that, that first step. Mm-hmm. When you're in the mood to make music, what are some of the things you do every time? What are the things you do to kind of get in the motions? And then after that, tell us what decides a song is ready to release. Mm. What do I do? What gets me in the mood? I mean, the most cliche answer. Yeah. I smoke weed, obviously. Oh, well, I mean, like after <laughs> after you're after you're inspired. But oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I thought like, we were talking like no, you know, no. When when you're when you're when you're inspired to make the music, what are those first things you do every time to kind of like creatively get those steps started? I start mumbling. Okay. So I'll play a beat and I'll start mumbling a melody. You know what I mean? And then I'll kind of just fill words into that. So like. I'll hear what I would like to hear. Like, so I tell everybody my songs write themselves. Mm-hmm. If I play the beat and I'm able to start, you know, doing my little hum thing and, mm-hmm. you know, mumbling it and getting it together, like melody wise, you know, I could start figuring out subject matter and the words that go in that place. Okay. You know, just because I feel like, you know, there has to be emotion in every song that I do. Uh, and that's kind of how I put it in there. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> the oohs and ahs of music, you know what I mean? Just yeah. kind of figuring out what's going to trigger somebody's emotion. Okay. Uh, and then make it powerful with the words from there. Is that, a, is that a good answer? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I kind of half answered it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You know? All right, yeah. And then what decides a track is ready to release? What decides a track is ready to release? So I'm not big on singles. Like if you look me up on Apple Music or anything, I, mm-hmm. I release full bodies of work okay. um, just because. Well, then we'll, we'll broaden the question. What decides a, an album is ready to put out? Uh, to me, it just has to be cohesive. It has to make sense. I like to play with the arrangement of the tracks to figure out, you know, what blends perfectly. Mm-hmm. I usually pick an artist or an album that inspires me uh, to kind of, you ever play Mega Man? Mm -hmm. He like, you know, plays one of, he goes against one of the bosses and he takes a power from him. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I do with like a slew of albums and I kind of take pieces from everything and figure out what I want to do. Okay. Uh, So when it comes to releasing the record, if I've captured that vibe that I think I could create with those, Mm -hmm. then it's ready. Okay. You know, oh, yeah. it's just got to be a complete thought, just like a sentence, and then it's ready to go. And I don't like to overthink it anymore. I know a lot of people overthink that. You know what I mean? Just drop your music. Yeah. You know, don't overthink it. If you like it and you listen to it and your people like it, nine times out of ten, the world's going to like it. Just put You it know, I, I say that a lot in previous episodes. Also, it's kind of the thing where it's like, in the beginning, you have to put music out. Yeah. Like, because that's how people know you, like right. whether you have range, whether you have a style, whether you have a type and even the growth. People love growth. Yeah. Like they love seeing it start from the beginning and then go somewhere. Yeah. So putting stuff out just kind of gives people that. And in a way, it gives you a, an opportunity to litmus test with a smaller audience. Right. Like it's easier to get feedback from 50 people than it is 500 people. Right. So the early stages are where you try new things, you do stuff all the time. But putting it out is, you know, the most yeah. important part. Yeah, man. Put your music out for sure. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And and then out of all the songs you have available right now, mm-hmm. if you had to show somebody one first, like obviously all the other ones will always be there, but if you had to show somebody one first, which one would you show them? Man, so my I, I'm a fan of my music mm-hmm. just because I make sure I am. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like the yeah. songs that I'm not a fan of, y'all will never hear. Uh, and there's thousands of them, trust me. Um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, for for the record, just because people know it, I would say "Put It On God," produced by my man G Cozy. Okay, um, it's the biggest one. You know, the video has like fifty thousand views. Oh, and, damn. and it's doing really good. Uh, we just played it at a concert with D Savage, and like the whole crowd already knew the words. Oh so, hell yeah! Uh, yeah, I, I would have to say that one because nine times I send a person might have heard it. Hey, that's a you know. Oh I mean? yeah, I dig yeah. that. Yeah. And then, um, tell us about either one of the like one of your most favorite shows you've ever performed or one of the most wild shows you've ever performed. Yeah. Or if you have one for each, you can tell both stories, man. You said wild or, or favorite wild or favorite or both. If they're separate stories, uh, my favorite show we did was with baby Tron. Okay. Hell yeah. And I'll probably say that could kind of be the, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's the wildest. I'll take you back for the wildest. Yeah. One. yeah go for but it. Yeah. My favorite show was baby Tron. We had, you know, all Portland heavy hitters on the stage with me that night, and we were crowd surfing and shooting through the air, and it, it was freaking ridiculous. Hell uh, yeah. Baby Tron didn't even really want to go like that by the time we were done. You know, I, <laughs> I actually got in trouble for that. They said I did too good as an opener. Uh oh. It's a Uh-oh. good problem. A yeah. Good problem. Good problem. Um, but my wildest, I would say, was back at home 
when I performed like for the first couple times, we had like this little showcase. Um, I forget what it was even called, but it used to be at this little place called the Volume Cafe in Turnersville, New Jersey. And my first headlining event, we sold out ridiculous. Like people were in the parking lot and we like, we went crazy, man. That's when I really first started like making like rock records and, mm -hmm. you know, heavy, dark trap metal almost. And yeah. So I was like taking my shirt off and pouring water on myself and <laughs> shit like that. Like I don't even do that stuff anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, that was definitely the wildest. It was crazy. People were all over the place. I think we probably destroyed that place, but they loved it. Hell yeah. Yeah. And that was years ago. I want to say that might have been 2014, 15 or something like that. I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, hey man, t time definitely <laughs> flies after a while, but yeah. it's cool that you've been in it for a while. What's, what's something that you found helps with like longevity and music creation? Like what's a thing that you feel has helped make it so you're able to do it for as long as you have? Uh, just continue to recreate yourself within your style. You okay. know what I'm saying? Within your yeah. limits, within your personal limits. Just, you know, if that means, I don't know, uh, you know, be sensitive to your surroundings and things like that. Like what music is doing well, if you like it, you know, can you put your spin on it? Can you change your style? Can you, you know what I'm saying, make something unique about you to make people look at you again as you could show them what you've been doing. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Uh, so longevity kind of comes with... Uh, just being present, you know, being present and making sure you're staying consistent and you're always talking about your music so that people are always asking you what's next. Hell yeah. You know, not too hard. No, and definitely. make more money <laughs> so that you can, you know, match the brand. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Hell yeah. All right. Now this is going to wrap up the artist focus portion of this. Okay. Um, but this is kind of a denser question. We've talked a lot about like what comes from music, all the things that music does and such, but what is it about the process of making music that matters the most to you? What is it the thing about the creation of music that just you enjoy the most? Uh, the fact that I'm documenting my life and that if anything were to happen to me tomorrow, God forbid, anybody who enjoys me or my music can still hear my voice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So it kind of like it eternalizes deep, right? you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I tell everybody, make at least one song, you live forever. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love mm -hmm. that. All right. Now. Let's go ahead and let's dive into some hypothetical questions. Okay. And these are all, you know, <laughs> sk sky's the limits. There are no wrong answers because okay. they're all just a bunch of what ifs. Yeah. And the first one, if you could work with any one artist who's currently alive, mm -hmm. and if it's a member of a group or band, you have to pick a single person, mm -hmm. who would you pick and how would you work with them? Um, so I was literally just talking about this on the way here. I would say, and this is currently too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every artist that I've ever really wanted to make a song with, I, I have okay uh, so I've, I've cut this this list a little short other than like obvious legends who are old now yeah uh but quavo oh hell yeah i think i would make a, a lot of good music with quavo yeah um that's definitely my favorite right now uh what was the second part of that question it was the two-part question right it, it yes there is a there is a question that follows it up oh oh, oh yeah, yeah. But I, I did it right I yeah, yeah. It so right yeah so question. quavo is a great answer for the first one and then subsequently who is a local artist that you're aware of that you maybe just haven't gotten to connect with yet but you would like to because they're on your radar um on my radar that i haven't connected with is slim because i've okay I've definitely i've i know almost everybody but hmm, let me think um not on my radar i mean he's on my radar but the next like artist that i like that i would work with his name is sev knots okay yeah he's a young kid that's doing his thing and he's got a good flow and the right supporters behind him so yeah. i would say him oh yeah yeah he's dope yeah. all right and then um if you could perform anywhere in the world and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access power building stability Guaranteed best lineup, guaranteed best show. Where would you perform? Where would I perform? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a venue. It could be anywhere. Where would I perform? That This is like best case scenario for me is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I mean, like I said, sky's the limits. Uh, every logistical thing that could be taken care of is mm -hmm. taken care of. All you have to do is just pick a place and it'll happen. I don't know, man. I think what I'm really into now that I would like to do is that, you know, that sphere in Las Vegas I would like to do something there. I Hell feel like yeah. I could do something with them. Lights. Hell yeah. And I'm I, glad somebody else, I, I've mentioned it a few times when other people like <laughs> give their answers. Yeah. Nobody else has said that yet, but that seems like the wildest place. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I don't know. I feel like the lights would be crazy if you can really control what it is. Oh, and yeah. it really shows like that outside. 
Well, it's like, could you imagine just that. not being able to look past whatever the visual is? Yeah. Unless you like turn all the way around, like <laughs> yeah. the one thing you wouldn't do. Right. Like that's, that's a different type of immersive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it only goes up from there. Yeah. And I'm a big gamer too. So I can imagine that would feel like having an Oculus on or something. Yeah. But know? without the, the contraption. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. No, I, I think it would be on my list too. If I could, uh, I guess if I could do an episode somewhere, yeah, that'd be weirder, be weirder than doing a music performance, but we're going to do it anyway. Hey, got to. Hell yeah. Got to. And then, and then to round it all out, if you had to pick a completely different genre than any other style of music you've ever performed before, and you'd be equally as proficient as your main one now, Mm -hmm. what would you pick? Oh, and you can't pick country or anything heavily electronic based. Okay. Um, I've done, I've done almost every genre, to be honest with you. I have punk rock records, I have metal records, I have R&B records. But as far as what I can do at a high level, and also like write records for other artists too, I would say R&B. Okay. Yeah, because I definitely am not in the R&B category full time, but if I was to delve into that, I, I think I'd be great. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Yeah, but I just don't like to sing. No, I feel you. Hey, <laughs> you and me both. That's why I got Shout into this. Singers. Yeah. Singers. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. Why don't you tell us about what you have coming up, say, uh, end of November to like March? Uh, I'm going to drop a new album. I'm going to drop a little 12 track album. Uh, it's called Final Chat Fantasy. Oh, hell yeah. Um, this comes from my uh, love for Final Fantasy games uh, and a lot of other things. Uh, I would say this album is a cross between Gucci Mane and Drake. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be quick. I produced a lot of the records, which I took a step back from. Oh, gotcha. Um, but I'm back to it. Uh, and yeah, I'll say that'll come out like December, early December for sure. It's done already. So okay, yeah. I don't so got just... much longer, longer to wait. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. My last album, Phoenix and Never Ending Story, is available now. Uh, that features Rob Banks, who's Shaggy's son, uh, Curtis Williams from 2-9. Uh... I know I'm missing somebody else, but my man DC Capital produced a couple records. Pretty good record, you know. Damn, what I mean, yeah. we did a couple tours with Rob Banks and D Savage this past year off that album, and uh, we're ready to start doing something else. That's exciting. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And then uh, go ahead and for this next one, look at the camera and tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me anywhere that you can Google anything. So just type in Lambo Lawson on Google, and it'll pop up. Apple Music, Spotify, Title. My old SoundCloud stuff, if you really want to do your research, it's all available for you. I got a thousand records online, baby. Oh, yeah. And then uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? Oh, man. Shout out to my man, DC Capital. Shout out to uh, Noyamo. Uh, shout out to, you know what I mean, Produce, the whole Produce family. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, man. We're going up. Follow me at Lambo Lawson on IG. Hell yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. All Thanks right. Thanks for having be, me, dog. Yeah, yeah, We got one more question to go, but before we do, I'm going to steal yeah. the camera for just a second. Yeah. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, <laughs> and I trust you. And with that being said, the final question. What is your guilty pleasure? Like a song I'm not I mean, to like. Yeah, or like or maybe like, it's like you love it, not everybody vibes with it, but you don't care. Like you're, you're going to put it on, you're not going to mind anyway. Man, guilty pleasure song. Uh, it's called "Picking Big Sean Up" by Chief. Okay, e. okay, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> you know about oh, you yeah. know that record? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's on the Phonem album with all the little green little uh, toy soldiers on it. "Picking Big Sean Up." Check that out. It'll get you going. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go ahead and get up on out of here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. This was dope. Yeah, this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy, and I'm Lambo Lawson. We're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. <laughs> this is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.